I, I thought I stuck the landing on that film. I don't know about you. Micro computer chassis, but I never saw stuff like that anywhere. Weird. I'm really glad I didn't put it in. The reason I didn't put it in is because the executive producer on the film, John Daly, had forced me to, to cast two actors that were pals of his. And so I thought, all right, I'll put them in the same scene. And that way, worst comes to worst, I can always take the scene out, which, of course, these guys were terrible. John Daly, you know, bless your soul, buddy, but they sucked. So the scene came out for reasons that were very specific to that first film. But I'm so glad it did because we got to take that idea and blow it up to a much larger scale and take that whole Cyberdyne plot and open it up. Get away from her, you bitch! You can't know what precedent you're gonna set, you know? You just do what makes sense at the time. I loved Sigourney's character, I loved Ripley. I loved the setting, the tone, I loved the alien, I loved the kind of idea of this complex life cycle that we didn't quite understand. I was just a fanboy trying to make a movie kind of like that one. But on the other hand, I had my own interests and my own themes that I wanted to explore. And so you put those two things together and what you get is aliens. You know, it was just totally where my head was at that time. I wasn't trying to play against Ridley at, at all. I was trying to lean into, I was trying to channel the Ridley, the Ridleyness of it. I didn't succeed because I'm not as good as him. Uh, you know, when it comes to shooting, the guy's like the best shooter in the world. But yeah, I, I, I kind of inadvertently put my own spin on it, I think. But it was, a, I think it had hybrid vigor as a result of that. I really respect Fincher as a filmmaker. David, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy, he's really smart. He got handed kind of a big mess on a plate and he tried to do something with it and I think I think they made a fatal mistake in killing off Newt and Bishop and every, you know you fight so hard for these people to survive and then you go to the next movie kind of those guys I like those guys they fought so hard they're warriors you know and then oh but, but they're all dead oh and then she's got an alien queen in her and she's gonna die too and it was like you can only hit the audience in the face with a two by four so many times before they kind of, you know, detach emotionally. So I consider that to be a, a, you know, a brilliant failure. Based on the technology available now, I think the ending would have worked a whole lot better. The, the alien mothership coming up out of the ocean, we just, we couldn't do water back then. I mean, we did it on a very microscopic kind of eyedropper level with the pseudopod, but that took a year to do 16 shots. That's where CG was at the time. Today, we wouldn't even think about it, it'd be so easy. But I think I also learned a lot about where the audience places its interest. And the scene where he brings her back to, to life and wills her back to life was so important. It was really hard for the movie to peak again to that level. And I think the ending wasn't as emotional as it should have been. But fortunately, I don't think, I don't think Titanic would have worked as well as it did if I hadn't made The Abyss and learned that lesson, which is that you have to orchestrate emotionally. It's not about peaking visually, it's about peaking emotionally. Morning, Sarah. Good morning, Dr. Silverman. How's the knee? It was all inspired by Linda, really. I called her up and I said, hey, we're thinking of doing another Terminator film. And this was like I don't know, five or six years after we had done the first one. I'd gone off, done other things, she'd done other things. She said, I want to be crazy. And that, it, I said, I can do that. I'll put you in a mental hospital. How's that sound? <laughs> she said, perfect, that's what I want. But it had to be that she wasn't really crazy, but she was right on the line. You know what I mean? She still knew, she still knew where her value system was, but she manifested as insane. You know, she has to have been changed by what she experienced. She has to have been changed by what she knows about the future of the world, which she must utterly believe because she went through this incredible experience. So she knows that basically 99% of the human population of the world is gonna be destroyed. And what would that be like? What would that be like to walk through life and know that everybody that you're interacting with only has another you know, couple of years to live? And so it, it takes its toll, and that made sense. Come on, baby. And Arnold knew that I could handle the action and he could handle the action, right? So it was interesting, he actually brought me that project. He said, I want you to take a look at a little French kind of action farce. Said, what? 
Is this Arnold talking? But I, I got it. When I watch it, I got it because he was dealing with, I'm a husband, I'm a father, but I'm also this kind of, this icon of masculinity. And, and he was relating to it as, what if James Bond had to go home to his wife and his family? And that just takes you down to, to ground level again. You can't be this, you know, womanizing adventurer and come home to a family. It just doesn't work, right? So uh, I got it completely, and I got what he, what he wanted out of it and how the comedy could work. But I'd never done a comedy. I knew we could do the action. So, you know, I came up with crazy stuff like him doing the tango with this exotic girl that he meets at this, you know, this mansion party. And uh, I sent him the script, and in the, in the margin, I, I put an arrow to the tango scene and it said, this is your most dangerous stunt. But I think he took that to heart because he did learn how to tango. Today would be worth more than the Hope Diamond. <laughs> it was a dreadful heavy thing. I only wore it this once. There was a, a sort of present day little burgeoning romance between you know, his character and Susie Amos's character. I cut it all out. And Susie for, must have forgiven me because we did get married <laughs> and we're still very happy together. So, but I cut it all out because I think what we found in the cutting process, and obviously the film is very long, is that people just wanted Jack and Rose. They just wanted that story. So a lot of the historical characters that were, you know, filmed as part of the, the, the famous stories of the sinking, John Jacob Astor and, and so on, you know, they got cut way down. And I, I cut the, the bookend present day scenes way, way down. We achieved our goals in terms of creating like the ultimate alien rainforest and the beauty and all that, but I think the part that still, that I still like the best and that I had to fight the hardest for, interestingly enough, was the flying. Because to me, we fly in our dreams and there's something very dreamlike and freeing and exhilarating and life-affirming about being able to fly and learning to fly. And it's through the flying that they fall in love. And so it resonates perfectly with the, with the love story. And you know, that's the part of it that I still think we nailed it. And if we hadn't nailed it, then the movie wouldn't have quite connected with people the way it did, right? But of course it is a love story. It's an epic love story. And that love story spans now four additional films. And we never take our eye off that ball that this is about two people who out of the entire universe probably love each other more than anybody else. But that doesn't mean they don't have their issues. You wait till you see what Zoe does in the, in the sequels. I'm watching a lot of the scenes now still at the level of just capture, where it's her in a head rig and a black leotard, and it, I cry. It's like, holy crap. I mean, she just brings, she goes to a whole nother level. And so does Sam. You know, all the returnees have taken it to a whole nother level, and the, the new actors coming in, they have to live up to that level, right? And they're, you know, several of them are teenagers. And they've, we really struck gold with our, with our new cast coming in as well.